Tarzan is a 1999 American animated adventure musical film produced by Walt Disney Feature Animation and released by Walt Disney Pictures. The 37th film in the Walt Disney Animated Classics, it is based on the story Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs, and is the first animated major motion picture version of the Tarzan story. Directed by Chris Buck and Kevin Lima with a screenplay by Tab Murphy, Bob Sudeiker, and Noni White, Tarzan features the voices of Tony Goldwyn, Minnie Driver, Glenn Close, and Rosie O'Donnell with Brian Blessed, Lance Henriksen, Wayne Knight, and Nigel Hawthorne. Pre-production of Tarzan began in 1995 with Kevin Lima selected as director, being later joined by animator Chris Buck the same year. Following a first draft by Tab Murphy, Bob Sudeiker, Noni White, and Dave Reynolds were brought in to reconstruct the third act and add additional humor to the screenplay. English singer Phil Collins was recruited to compose songs while Mark Manchina composed the score. Meanwhile, the production team embarked on a research trip to Uganda in Kenya to study the gorillas. Animation for the film was done in California, Orlando, Florida, and Paris with Deep Canvas, the pioneering computer animation software system, predominantly used to create three-dimensional backgrounds. Tarzan was released on June 16, 1999, to a positive reaction from critics who praised the film's animation and music. Against a production budget of $130 million which cost $140 million, the film grossed $448.2 million worldwide becoming the fifth highest film release in 1999. Second highest animation release of 1999 behind Toy Story 2, and the first Disney animated feature to open at first place at the North American box office since Pocahontas. The film has led to many derived works, such as a Broadway adaptation, a television series The Legend of Tarzan, and two direct-to-video follow-ups, the sequel Tarzan and Jane and the mid-call Tarzan 2. Plot in the 1880s, an English couple and their infant son escape a burning ship, ending up on land near uncharted rainforests off the coast of Africa. The couple craft themselves a treehouse from their ship's wreckage, but are subsequently killed by Saba, a rogue leopardess. Carla, a female gorilla who recently lost her own child to Saba, hears the cries of the orphaned human infant and finds him in the ruined treehouse. Though she is attacked by Saba, Carla and the baby manage to escape. Carla takes the baby back to the gorilla troop to raise as her own, an act of which her mate, Kerchik, disapproves. Carla raises the human child, naming him Tarzan, though he befriends other gorillas in the troop and other animals, including the young female gorilla Turk and the paranoid male elephant Tanta. Tarzan finds himself unable to keep up with them, so he takes great efforts to improve himself. As a young man, Tarzan is able to kill Sabo with his crude spear and protect the troop, gaining Kerchik's reluctant respect. The gorilla troop's peaceful life is interrupted by the arrival of a team of human explorers from England, consisting of Professor Porter, his daughter Jane, and their hunter-guide Clayton. Jane is accidentally separated from the group and chased by a pack of baboons. Tarzan saves her from the baboons. He recognizes that she is the same as he is, a human. Jane leads Tarzan back to the explorer's camp, where both Porter and Clayton take great interest in him, the former in terms of scientific progress while the latter hoping to have Tarzan lead him to the gorillas so that he can capture them and return with them to England. Despite Kerchik's warnings to be wary of the humans, Tarzan continues to return to the camp and be taught by Porter, Clayton, and Jane to speak English and learn of the human world, and he and Jane begin to fall in love. When the explorer's boat returns to retrieve them, Clayton convinces Tarzan that Jane will stay with him forever if he reveals the gorillas. Tarzan agrees and leads the party to the nesting grounds, while Turk and Tanta lure Kerchik away to avoid having him attack the humans. 
Porter and Jane are excited to mingle with the gorillas, but Kerchik returns and threatens to kill them. Tarzan is forced to hold Kerchik at bay while the humans escape, and decides to leave the troop himself, now humiliated by his actions. Carla takes Tarzan to the treehouse she found him in, and shows him his true past, tells him that she wants him to be happy whatever he decided. When Tarzan returns to the ship with Jane and Porter, they are ambushed by Clayton and his band of stowaway pirates and detained in the brig. Tarzan flees with the help of his friends, and he races back to the gorilla's home ground. Clayton mortally wounds Kerchik and then engages Tarzan in a fierce battle across the vine-covered trees. Although Tarzan spares his life, Clayton is finally killed when he falls with a vine around his neck, hanging him. Kerchik, in his dying breath, finally accepts Tarzan as his own and names him as leader of the guerrilla troop. The rest of the guerrillas are freed after scaring away the rest of Clayton's men. The next day, as Porter and Jane prepare to leave on the ship, Tarzan reveals that he now plans to stay with the guerrilla troop. As the ship leaves shore, Porter encourages his daughter to stay with the man she loves, and Jane jumps overboard to return to shore. Porter shortly follows her. The Porters reunite with Tarzan and his family and embark on their new life together. Cast, Tony Goldwyn as Tarzan, a man raised by gorillas who finds out he is truly a human. Glenn Keane served as the supervising animator for Tarzan as an adult, while John Reaper animated Tarzan as an infant and child. John Reaper studied the movements of young chimpanzees to use for young Tarzan's animation. Alex D. Lintz as young Tarzan. Minnie Driver as Jane Porter, daughter of Professor Porter and a part of an English explorer group. She's the first of the group to encounter Tarzan and they fall in love. Ken Duncan served as the supervising animator for Jane. Many of Minnie Driver's mannerisms and characteristics were incorporated into Jane's animation. The scene where Jane describes meeting Tarzan for the first time to her father in Clayton was improvised by Minnie Driver, resulting in Ken Duncan animating one of the longest animated scenes on record. The scene took seven weeks to animate and 73 feet of film. Glenn Close as Carla, Tarzan's adoptive mother who found and raised him after losing her last biological son to Saba. She is Kerchik's mate. Russ Edmonds served as the supervising animator for Carla. Lance Henriksen as Kerchik, Carla's mate and the leader of the gorilla troop who does not adjust properly to Tarzan since he is human. But before he dies, he finally accepts him as his son and leaves him to lead the troop. Bruce W. Smith served as the supervising animator for Kerchik. Brian Blessed as Clayton, an intelligent, suave, yet impatient hunter who guides the porters on their quest. Randy Haycock served as the supervising animator for Clayton, and based his design off of Clark Gable and other stars of the 30s and 40s. Nigel Hawthorne as Professor Archimedes Q. Porter, Jane's short-sized father and an eccentric biologist. Dave Burgess served as the supervising animator for Porter. This was Hawthorne's final voice acting role before his death in 2001. Rosie O'Donnell as Turk, Tarzan's best friend, a smart aleck, comedic, tomboy gorilla. She is also Kala's niece, making her and Tarzan adoptive cousins. Michael Surrey served as the supervising animator for Turk. Wayne Knight as Tanta, a paranoid elephant and best friend of Tarzan and Turk. He has Turk step all over him most of the time, but when Tarzan is in danger he steps up and tells her off. Sergio Pablas served as the supervising animator for Tanta. Taylor Dempsey as young Tanta. Production. Development Disney's Tarzan was the first Tarzan film to be animated. Thomas Schumacher, the president of Feature Animation, expressed surprise that there weren't any previous attempts to animate a Tarzan film, saying, Here is a book that cries out to be animated. Yet we're the first filmmakers to have ever taken Tarzan from page to screen and presented the character as Burroughs intended. He noted that in animated form, Tarzan is able to connect to the animals on a deeper level than he can in live-action versions.
Following work on a Goofy movie in late 1994, Kevin Lima was approached to direct Tarzan by studio chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg who desired to have the film animated at a Canadian-based satellite television animation studio, in which Lehmer was reluctant to do because of the animation complexities being done by inexperienced animators. Following Katzenberg's resignation from the Walt Disney Company, Lehmer was again contacted about the project by Michael Eisner, who decided to have the film produced through the feature animation division by which Lehmer signed on. Following this, Lima decided to read Tarzan of the Apes where he began to visualize the theme of two hands being held up against each other. That image became an important symbol of the relationships between characters in the film, and a metaphor of Tarzan's search for identity. I was looking for something that would underscore Tarzan's sense of being alike, yet different from his ape family, Lima said. The image of touching hands was first conceived as an idea for how Tarzan realizes he and Jane are physically the same. Following his two-month study of the book, Lima approached his friend, Chris Buck, who had just wrapped up work as a supervising animator on Pocahontas, to ask if he would be interested in serving as co-director. Buck was initially skeptical, but accepted after hearing Lima's ideas for the film. By April 1995, the Los Angeles Times reported that the film was in its preliminary stages with Lima and Buck directing after Disney had obtained the story rights from the estate of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Writing Tab Murphy, who had just finished work on The Hunchback of Notre Dame, was attracted to the theme of man versus nature in Tarzan and began developing a treatment in January 1995. For the third act, Murphy suggested that Tarzan should leave for England, as he did in the book, but the directors felt that it was incompatible with their central theme of what defines a family. In order to keep Tarzan in the jungle, the third act needed to be restructured by redefining the role of the villain and inventing a way to endanger the gorillas. In this departure from Burroughs' novel, a villain named Clayton was created to serve as a guide for Professor Archimedes Q. Porter and his daughter, Jane. In addition to this, Kerchik was re-characterized from a savage silverback into the protector of the gorilla tribe. In January 1997, husband and wife screenwriting duo Bob Sudiker and Noni White were hired to help refocus and add humor to the script as a way to balance the emotional weight of the film. Comedy writer Dave Reynolds was also brought on to write humorous dialogue for the film. I was initially hired on for six weeks of rewriting and punch-up, Reynolds said. A year and a half later, I finished. Either they liked my work, or I was very bad at time management. One challenge the writers faced was how Tarzan should learn about his past. When Carla takes Tarzan back to the tree house, she is essentially telling him that he was adopted. Bonnie Arnold, the producer for Tarzan, said, This is necessitated by him encountering humans and recognizing he is one of them, as a way to explore the feelings in that scene. Arnold brought in adoptive parents to talk with the story team. Casting Brendan Fraser auditioned twice before the title character before portraying the lead role in George of the Jungle. Tony Goldwyn auditioned for the title role as well, and according to co-director Kevin Lima, Goldwyn landed it because of the animal sense in his readings, along with some killer baboon imitations for the signature Tarzan yell. Lima and Buck desired the traditional yell, although Goldwyn faced difficulties with providing the yell stating, it's really hard to do. Physically, co-star Brian Blessed ultimately provided the yell. Turk was originally written as a male gorilla, but following Rosie O'Donnell's audition, Turk was re-characterized as a female. Animation The animators were split into two teams, one in Paris and one in Burbank. The 6,000-mile distance and difference in time zones pose challenges for collaboration, especially for scenes with Tarzan and Jane. Glenn Keane was the supervising animator for Tarzan at the Paris studio, while Ken Duncan was the supervising animator for Jane at the studio in Burbank. 
to make coordinating scenes with multiple characters easier. The animators used a system called a scene machine that could send rough drawings between the two animation studios. Meanwhile, 200 animators at the Feature Animation Florida Satellite Studio provided character animation and special effects animation where the filmmakers had to discuss their work through daily video conferences among the three studios. Keen was inspired to make Tarzan surf through the trees because of his son's interest in extreme sports, and he began working on a test scene. The directors expressed concern that Tarzan would be made into a surfer dude, but when Keen revealed the test animation to them, they liked it enough to use it in the film during the Son of Man sequence. Although Keen initially thought that Tarzan would be easy to animate because he only wears a loincloth, he realized that he would need a fully working human musculature while still being able to move like an animal. To figure out Tarzan's movements, the Paris animation team studied different animals in order to transpose their movements onto him. They also consulted with a professor on anatomy. This resulted in Tarzan being the first Disney character to accurately display working muscles. To prepare for animating the gorillas, the animation team attended lectures on primates, made trips to zoos, and studied nature documentaries, with a group of animators also witnessing a gorilla dissection to learn about their musculature. In 1996, the animation team went on a two-week safari in Kenya to take reference photographs and observe the animals. On the trip, they visited Windy Impenetrable National Park in Uganda to view mountain gorillas in the wild and get inspiration for the setting. In 2000, Chris Buck repeated the journey accompanied by journalists to promote the film's home video release. To create the sweeping 3D backgrounds, Tarzan's production team developed a 3D painting and rendering technique known as Deep Canvas. This technique allows artists to produce CGI background that looks like a traditional painting, according to art director Daniel Street. Pierre. For this advancement, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences awarded the creators of Deep Canvas a Technical Achievement Award in 2003. After Tarzan, Deep Canvas was used for a number of sequences in Atlantis, The Lost Empire, particularly large panoramic shots of the island and several action sequences, expanded to support moving objects as part of the background. Deep Canvas was used to create about 75% of the environment in Disney's next major animated action film, Treasure Planet. Music In 1995, Collins was initially brought onto the project as a songwriter following a recommendation by Disney music executive Chris Montin. Early into production, directors Kevin Lima and Chris Buck decided not to follow Disney's musical tradition by having the characters sing. I did not want Tarzan to sing, Lima stated. I just couldn't see this half-naked man sitting on a branch breaking out in song. I thought it would be ridiculous. Instead, Collins would perform the songs in the film serving as the narrator. The choice of Collins, a popular and well-established adult contemporary artist, led to comparisons with Elton John's earlier music for The Lion King. Tarzan was dubbed in 35 languages, the most for any Disney movie at the time, and Collins recorded his songs in French, Italian, German, and Spanish for the dubbed versions of the film's soundtrack. According to Collins, most of the songs he wrote for Tarzan came from improvisation sessions and his reactions while reading the treatment. Three of the songs he wrote, Son of Man, Trashine, The Camp, and Strangers Like Me, were based on his initial impressions after he read the source material. The other two songs were, You'll Be In My Heart, a lullaby sung to Tarzan by Carla and Two Worlds, a song Collins wrote to serve as the anthem for Tarzan.
The instrumental scoring for the film was composed by Mark Manchina, who had previously produced music for The Lion King and the musical of the same name. Manchina and Collins worked closely to create music that would complement the film's setting, and used many obscure instruments from Manchina's personal collection in the score. The idea of score and song arrangement came together as one entity. As Phil and I worked in tandem to create what's heard in the film, Manchina said.